Let's move over to another big story from today. An earthquake in parts of Gauteng in the early hours of today has left many residents traumatized. The Council for Geoscience says the quake measured a magnitude 4.4. Boxburg in Ekuruleni is uh, the epicenter. The Council for Geoscience is investigating whether mining activity in the area could be behind the quake. Michelle Grobelard uh, from the Council for Geoscience joins us now for more on this. Uh, thank you so much for your time, uh, Michelle. I'm going to be Honest, I did not feel anything, but apparently the area that I stay in, um, th that area did not uh, experience any kind of tremor or quake because uh, I'm a very light sleeper. But many people are uh, describing this as really traumatic. Uh, upon investigations, what have you found to be the cause of this earthquake? Well, yes, um, that area has been experienced earthquakes in the past before. And so, of course, we weren't, uh, we we, we do expect earthquakes to occur in the future. Um, so, like you mentioned earlier, there have been uh, effects from the abandoned mines in that region, um, especially with the flooding of, the, of those abandoned mines. So that's something that we've always kept in mind um, when, when, you, when we start to get these kind of events that occur um, once the mines have closed. And we've had it, like we've mentioned in the past, uh, we've done projects where we've tried to do uh, what we call microzonation studies. So we try to identify the areas that will get affected the most or feel the vibrations the most, which explains why you probably didn't feel it. Uh, you could have been in, a, in an area um, where the geology doesn't really amplify that uh, the ground motions. And so we, what, that's what we've discovered with the microzonation studies is that certain areas, the ground motion amplif gets amplified and others they don't. <clears throat> So that is what we're, we're looking at. Um, those are the sort of studies that we investigate. And we, we use information like the questionnaires uh, that we've got on our website. Uh, that's why we'd like to ask the public if they have felt to please take some time to complete these questionnaires. And that sort of information will then go into our studies once again so that we can start to refine um, our, 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 our knowledge on, on these events. Sure. So are investigations still underway or can we at this point say it's probably got to do with the mining activity in the area? No, we're certainly going to what we probably will do is, is send out a team to also in, uh, speak to the, the people in the area, see how they've experienced it. And that sort of information will then also again feed back into our research so we can then get a better idea of, of what what we what actually occurred this morning. Yes, uh, let me ask this question in the context of the fact that it was measured uh, a magnitude of 4.4. And many would say that is rather large uh, and worrying. Um, you know, people were saying, oh, no, it was just a tremor. Others were saying, no, that in actual fact was an earthquake. Um, given the magnitude that it's measured at, uh, I know you're saying investigations are still underway, but can we say it could actually be because of the mining activity, given the magnitude that it measured at, or is there a possibility that it could be linked to something else? It's, um, it's, it's, that's a very difficult question to answer. Um, in seismology, we, there, are, there is still a lot of unknowns when it comes to um, understanding uh, how the earth reacts, how the earth moves. And so, uh, you know, the, uh, the, it's because of what we've happened in the past, uh, we are, uh, it's more likely to be related to your mining events uh, or your mining activity, um, as I mentioned, and the fact that we're starting to get these, these mines uh, starting to fill up with water. And so what you get, start to get there is starts to, uh, lubricate the faults, um, the, so the stresses get released along those faults, and that's what what causes these earthquakes that we that we're experiencing. Um, so it's yes, we're still going to investigate into it, uh, look into it. Um, however, it, it's from what we've known from the past, it is quite likely to be related to something like these. Like okay. this. Uh, interesting and important to to know. I, I want to ask you about our aftershocks, though, because many are saying when you see and experience such an earthquake, there's a possibility that in the next couple of hours or even days, there could be aftershocks. Are we worried about this? Yes, that's always that's always a possibility. Uh, whenever you get a you know 4.4 for South for, in South African terms is quite well. It's still it's largish, um, but when you talk about 
Japanese uh, kind of uh, what, what they experience, it's, it's still fairly small. But still, you once you get that, that sort of ground motion, uh, the Earth is still trying to settle down to get rid of all those stresses. So one can expect aftershocks um, uh, to occur. But of course, these aftershocks should be smaller than your 4.4. And sometimes, in fact, people hard, don't really feel them um, because they are much smaller. So the idea is if, if, if there is an aftershock um, and people are concerned, then they should just follow the normal procedures to, to remain safe, uh, such as getting underneath something that's a bit uh, stronger so to, to protect their heads from anything that may fall. Um, uh, also, if they're outside, to stay away from trees or power lines or, or, or over, anything overhead. Um, so those are the sort of... Uh, uh, precautions one should take if you do feel a bit threatened or scared during an earthquake. Mm. I just want to ask you, um, Michelle, in terms of time frames, though, because there's a bit of confusion if there is an aftershock, if it's in the next couple of hours, if it's 24 hours or 48 hours, or if it's in the next couple of days. Do we normally know the time frame of aftershocks if South Africa uh, and this area that was hit yesterday, especially Gauteng, would experience this? Yes, usually these earthquakes, uh, it depends on the size of the event, of course. Um, once you, for instance, I'm, I'm, I'll take you back to 2014, um, when we had the big uh, earthquake in uh, the Clarkstorp region. And that event, we had aftershocks for a couple of months afterwards. And so that's... But, but that's because of the size of the of the event. So with this sort of event, um, we wouldn't expect the aftershocks to continue for that for that long. Um, but one could probably expect it maybe for about a month at least. Um, but again, it'll probably be smaller than the this this big event that we felt this morning. And most probably, a lot of people wouldn't won't even feel them. Okay, and then just lastly, I mean, you've briefly mentioned what uh, one should do if they are panicked or scared. I mean, I've been seeing um, people on social media saying, I thought somebody was breaking into my house. I just grabbed my child and I just stood in the doorway because I didn't know what to do. Uh, but what should one do um, if we experience the aftershock and it uh, is, you know, as serious as what we saw happening in the early hours of this morning? Right, certainly. So, like I mentioned, so if you're indoors, uh, you get under, if you can get under your bed or you get under a table or something like that, something to prevent anything that should might fall from the roof or from bookshelves to prevent it from hitting you on the head. Um, if you can, if you're close enough to a door, you can obviously run outside where there's fewer things that can fall on your head. Um, should you be outside, then obviously stay away from trees, uh, street lights, uh, overhead uh, lines and stuff like that that also may fall during an earthquake onto you. Um, so that's the basic rules or, or suggestions that one can follow uh, should you feel a bit threatened during an earthquake. Okay, thank you so much for your insights and uh, we wish you all the best with your uh, investigation. That was uh, Michelle Krobelard, who's from the Council for Geoscience. And as you heard her mention, the fact that there is still an investigation underway as to what could have caused that earthquake measured at uh, a magnitude of 4.4. It might be linked to mining activity in the area and there is a possibility of some aftershock. We're just not exactly sure when and how serious it will be.